Will a 1997 Lotus Esprit, a.k.a. wannabe Ferrari 355, bring any money at all on BAT? Does anybody care about this car? Let's find out right now. Nerds! Bid Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show. Get those nerds! Where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. What are we going to start out with here, Michael Deeb? All right, let's start with this. On Bring a Trailer, 1997 Lotus Esprit V8. JP, this car is got 23,000 original miles and is offered out of Villa Park, Illinois. Um Super cool car, JP. You know, the Lotus Esprit is is a beautiful Gigaro design. Um, this was sort of the last of the breed when they, you know, got rid of the four-cylinder turbo and decided to put a V8 twin turbo that made like 350 horsepower under the hood so that this car, which was a design from the early 70s, now, you know, 20-something years later, you know, Lotus is still making it and they want it to keep up with more contemporary sports and supercars of the era. So they had to, um, you know, expand the performance of it by getting rid of the four banger and putting a three and a half liter double overhead cam V8 still had a five speed manual, still rear wheel drive, but way more updated bodywork and spoiler, beautiful wheels and, and suspension and brakes. Um, this car, I always thought, you know, I always thought the very first ones looked really cool. And then these last ones I thought looked really cool. It certainly looked a lot more comfortable on the inside too. Much finer materials. Um, I think go a long way. This car is accompanied by its original sticker. Can you believe in 1997, JP, this was just an $83,000 car, $82,796. Um, there's also a certificate of provenance included with the sale. Uh, apparently just a three owner car looks fantastic in the bright red with the silver wheels, the tan leather and the red piping. There's a lot to like here, JP. Um, I've never driven one of these. This is one of those cars that's sort of on my list. And I should bring that up only in light of the fact that while I was at the Jet Center all week, I got to, I, I, I know I only moved the cars around on the parking lot, but I got to get behind the wheel of a ton of cars that I have never driven before. And it was really, really funny. Um, it was super fun to kind of like, you know, just, be able to start like a Lamborghini Reventon or a 288 GTO and, and move it across the parking lot. Um, I have yet in all my car dealings getting to drive uh, a Lotus Esprit of any generation. Um, but if I got to, I'd be scared to drive one of these because I might like it and would want to buy one. These are still really affordable for how exotic sort of almost supercarish that they really are. So JP, I send back to you the 1997 Lotus Esprit V8, which is 23,000 miles, super rare, John, one of only 132 V8 models imported to North America in 1997. Can you imagine they sold less than 150 of these that year? Um, what do you think? Have you driven one? I keep forgetting to ask, or if you've, if I've asked you and I've, you give me the answer, I forgot, uh, ever driven the Lotus Esprit V8 or otherwise? Come on, man. License to drive. Was that the movie or license to kill or oh. something like that or whatever with oh. uh, Booker? Uh, who was that guy? He was the other guy. He was the... He was the lesser guy in 21 Jump Street, uh, not oh, Johnny man. Depp, but the other dude that had his own show. And then he had like one movie where he played a teen on a like European, you know, uh, field trip kind of thing. And he gets <laughs> separated from the busload of teens and mistaken for a James Bond type character. Oh, and they give him one of hilarious. these and he travels around, you know, it, it was in a red. I think it was one of the, the turbo, one of the little four cylinder turbo jobs. Um, yeah. But yeah, that movie, uh, for those of you, you guys can look it up. It was a silly movie. Um, I've always <laughs> loved these. Um, I, I have driven one of these. I, in fact, I drove, I want to say, it was a circa probably a 90. I must have been in like an 89 or a 90 because I worked for a deal, a Lotus. De well, it wasn't a Lotus deal. I worked for a dealership Yeah. at the time that was, it. they owned a bunch of franchises. It was a Bayside 
Porsche, Lotus, Mercedes, Volvo, Toyota. <sighs> and then I worked at this stupid little, the, their pot lot on the little strip. Uh, in the, you know, every town has that strip where all the crappy car yeah. dealers, uh, where all the big dealers send their crappy trade-ins. You know, I, I sold those. Yeah. That was the first, that was my, my car sales experience, right? I'm like a 19 yeah, year yeah. old punk. And, um, I had to go, <laughs> uh, and drop something off at the Toyota store, uh, across town. And while I was there, I think one of the older sales managers thought I was a didn't think I was a salesperson. I think he thought I was a, a lot kid or something. <laughs> so he's like, you, yeah, here, here. Uh, I need this car bought over to whatever. And yeah. so I'm like, he hands me the keys. I'm like, I'm not arguing with this guy right now. It's a brand new <laughs> Lotus Esprit. And uh, I got in that thing and I took the long way, man. I, they were yeah. ticked when I, I mean, I only had to go like three blocks and it took me an hour. Uh, yeah. I'm like, I got lost. I'm not down here. Uh, yeah. But uh, it seven, was terrifying. Seven, huh? Yeah. Se 70 miles on the car. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> an hour later. <laughs> I, you know, I took it to Dick's drive in, got a cheeseburger. I mean, I'm like showing off. I, I always did it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, fire me. I don't care. I got to drive a Lotus, whatever. I'm like, I'm, a, I'm yeah. an idiot. Um, but the, I, there was an article written about the car uh, at the time where, you know, it was like on Roden track or something like that, where the sure. writer said that seeing out of the car was like seeing out of a World War II bunker. You know, it had that wow. slit behind you where yeah. you're looking. It, it, I don't know if you've ever driven a Countach. It's the same way, right? You can't see out of it. You can see forward yeah. and that's it. The backing yeah. one up or look, blind spots. That's all it was. It's like, yeah. it's like driving through a street, looking through a straw. So it was yeah. terrifying on those Hills in Seattle, uh, with traffic and stuff like that. But again, it wasn't my car, so I didn't care. Um, I would love to drive one again. I mean, I didn't really know how to drive and I didn't fully get to appreciate it. I, I got to appreciate how flashy it looked, which I yeah. think is what you were commenting on. I mean, these cars yeah. look the B they look the business, right? It looks Beautiful. like every bit, uh, as exotic as, you know, the, the Countach or the three, you know, a three forty eight contemporary at the time yeah. or whatever. It was a great looking car. Uh, but always kind of anemic that four cylinder, you had to wrap it out and it was, uh, you know, so I've never driven one of these V eights and I'd sure like to, uh, have you heard yeah. of anybody? What they what, love to hear your guys is, um, yeah, right. You know, tell us in the Three. comments below what, what, what's it like to drive one of these V eights. There's Three. one in town here in Vegas that shows up to yeah. crushes all the time. Flat plane crank, uh, double overhead V eight, 350 horsepower, 295 pound foot of torque. I mean, that just sounds, I like mean, that sounds like you're describing just, a 355. Yeah. Just, you right, know, right. Mid engine so John, V eight, bright do, red, do you remember exotic car? Aren't these cars guilty of something that was really common back in that era where the, the, the firewall, the, the sorry, the, the the wheel well kind of impedes the pedal box, and so the pedals are all over to the right. Do you remember yeah. that? Like, yeah. And, and, the and switch the gear is junk. I mean, this is a British is, car. Right? I mean, there was a picture as we were going through the pictures there. You know, remember this was also the era where they teamed up with Isuzu. Um, <laughs> right. They I had. About that. Right, they had the yeah. Isuzu Impulse, yeah. which yeah. Were, yeah, and then they had the is that Lotus what, uh, Paul Elise. Has? Or what's yeah. that? Isn't that what Paul Kramer has? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what the heck? Yeah, that was the earlier generation, and then there was the Elan or something. So maybe and the, the Elise isn't right. Yeah, it was the Elan. Was the little kind yeah. of Miata looking thing. The uh -huh. thing that he had, the, he had the actual Zuzu that wasn't Impulse. called a Lotus. That was an Zuzu, and it said right. suspension by Lotus. Whereas right. the Lotus Elan was designed by Lotus, uh, but it had an Zuzu engine and a Zuzu switch right. gear. And I always thought that was a great looking car. It was way better looking than a Miata, but it was front wheel drive. I was like, ah. But look at the I steering know. wheel, guys. I mean, is that not an Zuzu steering wheel? <laughs> <laughs> um, the leather all looks pretty good and all that, but the switch gears, the buttons, I mean, that's right out of your Zuzu stuff. Um, so that's where you start to kind of really fall down. It's, I, I, these, these yeah. are not known to be reliable cars. All that said, uh, let's get to our prediction. Let's move on. What all right. do we think the results of this auction will be? That's a good question, JP. So with just... 23,000 miles on this 1997 Lotus Esprit V8 out of Villa Park, Illinois. Our car is currently sitting at $29,000 on just eight bids. Uh, JP, the car looks to be nice. Um, you know, I'd say it's 
better than good condition, but maybe not excellent with 23,000 miles. Um, I, we've seen a couple of these struggle to sell recently. Wasn't there one that we saw that bounced back and forth between like the Mark platform and either was it P car market or cars and bids? I don't this, yeah. I, yeah. And it was very similar to this car and they really struggled to sell that car. So, you know, in a perfect world and in a good economy, this should be a hundred thousand dollar car. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen here. I, I, you know, this car should bring 85 grand and I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, one of the things I haven't talked about yet, and we'll continue to talk about this over the coming weeks, because I think we're going to, we, you and I have started to see that, that this happening, but there's been a big softening in the market. A lot of cars, not just our auction, but all the auctions failed to meet low reserve um, or, or low, I should say low estimates in a lot of the big auction houses. Um, don't get me wrong. There's a few bright spots that are always going to set some like, you know, whoa, how are you? You know, numbers. But by and large, most cars uh, were soft. And I feel like this, a car that is so niche and doesn't have a big demand, um, this is going to be a, a true uh, victim of the softening of the market. So, John, believe it or not, I'm going to give you a really low number. I, I don't know if this car will make 65,000 bucks. I'm going to say 60 grand and give it to you right there and just say, I apologize to the guy who owns this car, but you picked the wrong week to sell it. My friend, I'm going to go $60,000, um, which is against my better judgment, but there Bro, you go. I think that's crazy high. I don't even think, I don't think it gets anywhere even remotely close to that. I think really? if this thing, I think if this thing gets another 10 or 15,000 bucks, I'd be shocked. So it's at like almost 30 now. Uh, yeah. so call, uh, dude, I, I'm going to say four, I'm going $20,000 less than your bid. What was your bid? Wow. 60? 60. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going 20 under. I think this thing's DOA. Does it have a reserve? Uh, yeah, it does have a reserve. Yeah. I, I, I I'm with yeah. you. I think the guy probably thinks it's worth that, but I, there's, who's buying this car. This is Nobody. not a blue chip car. No one's pining for this thing. I think, <laughs> yeah. you know, no one wants a car that they know is going to be in the shop every other time they drive it. And that's the reputation that this thing has. On top of that, you know, look at some of the pictures. One thing I didn't notice while I was, I was jibber jabbing about being a lot punk uh, years ago. Um, clean the damn thing, guys. What are you doing? Look at this. I mean, maybe we'll talk more about this on the other side. Uh, but, you know, they've got the, the there's obviously like a protection film on this thing um, a, along the bottom. And it's c picked up all this dirt. Replace that. Make it clean looking. It just looks dirty under the wind. It's, the presentation of this car is just not good, uh, yeah. which I think on top of a softening on the market, on top of a car, this not being a car that anyone's really looking for. I think this guy is he's this is his car. John, I also, as you said, look at the photos. I went and I, I looked again. This has to be one of the smallest buckets of photos I've seen for a special mm -hmm. car in a long time. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's not going to get it done, buddy. All you right. you got to co come to the party with 150 photos or, or, or start over. Like, yeah. you know. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. God and Porsche of Las Vegas. There he is, Wade from Tech Daily. Hello, made it back in the studio again for a, a new hangout. I know, right? You're you're like a third nerd, but tonight we have a fourth nerd. We have mental hitting the buttons. Look at that. Uh, I think when, I, when I'm abuse. in this seat, I'm Switcher Jesus. Switcher Jesus, good point. I like it. The monkeys have taken over the asylum. <laughs> uh, Switcher Jesus is the correct uh, moniker. So JP I just wanted that. a new person to blame for anything that goes wrong. I it's think. always me. So why, <laughs> why not have someone else do it? That is an excellent point. They do not pay us for our opinions. Who would really? Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe Michael Deves, but certainly not mine. Uh, and that's why I brought an expert. That's why I brought Wade from Tech Daily and Switcher oh, Jesus here. Geez. They both know more than uh, than me combined. Yeah, so I, I don't uh, know about that. Well, yeah. well, you you say that now and uh, stay tuned five minutes from now when I'm talking out of my rear end and uh, everyone's like, 
Why'd you bring this guy? Well, well see, that's what's on. great about this show is it's like the price is right only with cars. So yeah. we make a prediction of what's going to happen with a car's auction. Uh, yeah. And then we reconcile our incorrect guesses with what actually happens. Um, yeah. So the first half of the show, we talk about our previous uh, predictions. We reconcile those first. And then the second half of the show, we have new predictions. So you guys can play along at home and put your bids in uh, as we talk about the cars. And you can actually even go along uh, as we're talking about our predictions already. So Michael Deeb, uh, why don't we start with the first car from our last show, the yeah. uh, which, Lotus which Esprit. Was which was our first live show uh, this year, right? Yeah, so that yeah, was exactly. Cool. All right, that was kind of that was kind of fun. I actually really enjoyed that, and I feel like we got done a lot sooner than we normally do. <laughs> so, r- quick we- recap: What is this? Uh, is uh, this Lotus Esprit? So, JP, you may remember we were BAT heavy. We found on Bring a Trailer this 1997 Lotus Esprit V8, really nice car with just twenty three thousand miles, red with tan interior. Um, you know, sky's the limit on these things. Uh, sometimes when they're in really nice condition, they bring silly money. Uh, but this car was a little bit more down to earth, I think. So I, I get it because it had a few miles on it and it just showed a little bit of wear. It didn't look like a garage queen. So I said $60,000. JP, you cut my bid in half and came in at $40,000. And that was your fatal mistake because our car sold. Hold on, hold fit- on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh. Wait. Uh, Switcher Jesus, go to uh, the split here. Sorry, this is a new live show, so we're just well, kind of figuring and, and, this uh, out. Before you guys get too all deep into this, you know, I also am in a few Slack channels, and my Everyone Racers podcast, we have a Slack channel. We Who, all who's talk- talking? I hear someone talking, but I don't see oh, their face. Okay, you're going to make me do that. All right, yep. so we actually were talking about this Switcher exact Jesus car. Is, is we were talking about this Lotus switching. because, like you said, uh, Deeb, this is a driver. You could take yeah. this and, and start ripping around and not care. It's awesome. Right. Yeah, you can put a few miles on this and you're not going to hurt the value because that that ha- that's already happened. If this was a 5,000-mile car, then, yeah, you'd be looking, you know, you'd be, you'd be yearning for a six-figure return on it. Uh, but with some miles on it, it's just a driver-quality car and the market's soft. So, you know, anything could happen. Wade, what do you know about the Lotus Esprit and, and you want to care to gauge or get, guess a wager on this one before we give you the result? You know, unfortunately, I don't know a ton. What I do know about these cars, just from glancing at BAT and everything, is that um, they have such a wide range, right? You have they the do. V8s right. that can sometimes bring $200,000, and then you have the turbos or the turbo SEs, whatever they are, that bring like $25,000. I feel I don't know anything about this car. I, I would shoot somewhere in the middle of sixty or $70,000. I think okay. you, know, you got to put a number you can't just I'll, go 60 I'll or say, 70 that's two I'll, two, I'll, two guesses you get I'll, one I'll, guess i'll combine them sixty seven thousand dollars sixty seven thousand all right and yeah, switch yeah. jesus what's your number uh, i'm cheating because i was watching this car so i know oh. I, I, I okay can't, so I'm, he's gonna I'm, he's I'm, not gonna ooh, bid ooh. all right make sure well, we'll hey, the switch jesus him. don't go back to the car stay on this wide shot here for when uh for deeb's reveal deeb what happened with this car what was the final result so our car sold, JP, and I missed the Yahtzee by 2500 bucks. Our car oh. sold for $57,500 on 40 bids, which is pretty wow. respectable. This car got a lot of uh, action for a Lotus. Uh, a couple of guys must have been fighting over it because, you know, a car like this, I would expect the winner on like 18 bids. So 40 bids is a lot of action lot. for such a niche car. Uh, but 57500 is, I, I kind of think that's all the money based on where I put my bid. But the comments kind of reflected that, like, wow, what a deal. So I, I don't know if the people making those types of consistent remarks really know what they're talking about. I know we don't. But anyways, there you go. $57,500. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm surprised by that that uh, number. I thought it was going to be much lower. Um, I, I think uh, uh, of all the cars, I mean, right now we've been talking about exotic cars and, and more expensive cars and classic cars are all softening a little bit. It's really hard to finance something like this. And there's just not that many people that want this in the first place. If you're talking about, uh, you know, a Countach or something like that, that's a really expensive car, there's still people that have money and want that. Uh, but this car, I... I it's got a, this is a whim, right? This is someone that, that has some money and is they're, they're looking on uh, bring a trail and they come across this thing. And I guess maybe they pop on this. I mean, how many people really want 
a, a Lotus Esprit V8. I mean, it's just got to be a really short list. I, I want one. I, I would like one, but it's not high on any kind of list. There's about 50,000 other cars at 50 grand that I, or 50 or 60 or $70,000 that I'm going to buy before I buy this car. Um, this car I, is low on any collector's list, even though it is yeah. a cool car. Dude, I would love a garage full of cars, and this still wouldn't be in there. I, right. JP, if the something broke, and not if something broke, when something breaks, <laughs> where, honest, in, yeah. where, where in the f am I going to take this car? I do not have a Lotus mechanic in my back pocket. Oh, I don't it. know anybody. I don't know anybody that works on these cars. It's the GMV8. <laughs> you're fine. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I could just so I could just LS swap it when the when the motor goes. I just drop a new a new uh, aluminum block in there and, and go crazy. Right? Is it really just a a, a GMV8? Was, uh, Wouldn't it be swap? that easy to swap? I'm not going to say it's that easy to swap, but when they, this is when GM owned Lotus mm, and yeah. they did, this is the, uh, it's not the five, three LS, but it's the predecessor for, uh, for something. I'm sure we're going to get corrected in the comments below for the four something liter version of that car. Um, they were, they were trying to get over the, the turbo. Yeah, well, let, but let's be honest point. though. I mean, a, a Lotus, the, the problem isn't usually the engine. I mean, no, it's no, not, it's the, the engines else. aren't great, but um, it's all of the other things. Every bit of that, lo uh, is it still, I assume it's still a Lucas Electronics uh, vehicle. No, not at this point. No, I no, it's so. not. No, that's all from the seventies and shit. This, this car is just built poorly. That's all. It, yeah. You know, it, they, I, are you sure? That this because car, doesn't the, Lucas the, still do like Land Rovers time, and stuff now? At the time this car was made, weren't they in bed with, um, in, uh, what was it? Isuzu. Weren't we just talking about that the other day? We were talking about that. But yeah, who was so also... It, is... But those guys... Okay. Um, that's an interesting point. But if you recall, Isuzu and General Motors were also in bed. Uh, remember yeah. uh, remember the... Uh, what was it? The Capri? What was the... the who made the Capri? Um, Mazda. Ford. Ford. Well, no, I mean, no, yes. no, 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 the, uh, the convertible, the little two door. Yeah, it was convertible. a, it was a, it was a Mazda built Ford marketed car. That was the, Ma that was a Mazda car. That wasn't an Isuzu car. No, that uh, was, you're, uh, you're thinking of the Lotus Elon front wheel drive. No, we was, talked about yeah. that on the, on the previous episode, the Lotus Elon, but, um, the Capri, or yeah, the crappy, that, that, that was, it, it was known. a Mercury Capri, yeah, right? It, it was a yeah. Mercury Capri. Right. Um, and that had a, that had a Mazda powertrain in it. 1.8 or 1.6 predecessor. Why didn't the they Miata? make that car a Miata and make it rear wheel drive instead of making it front wheel drive? That is crazy. All right, I thought they had something because, to do with each other because GM didn't own any like small platform rear drives. They had all these front drivers, you know, for Econo boxes to go against like the uh, Honda Civic. Yeah, That's and why. that that 1.6 liter engine, the first the first time you saw that in a rear wheel drive application was the Miata, which is why when you race an NA Miata, the first thing you have to do is get the coolant block off plate because the number four piston always starves for oil mm -hmm. and water. Wait, okay, so I'm still a little confused. Is the Capri the Capri has the same powertrain as a Miata? Not the same powertrain, same or uh, the predecessor engine, the 1.6 liter that would evolve into the Miata. That would okay, even though they were the at the same time those that, cars that engine existed, existed the long time. before the miata it was in the protege it was in a half a dozen of their i see okay applications. Right. yeah that car was a piece of junk anyway front wheel drive the the elan was way cooler but uh, I, I thought I, they had something had to do with it was <laughs> of course switcher jesus had one you had to have, you didn't have long hair back then you needed the long hair to wait uh, yes absolutely I, I drove that horrible thing uh from new orleans uh back to oklahoma Oof. it didn't make it and uh, it, it blew a head gasket and I jumped it. <laughs> uh, Wade, have you ever had a convertible? I have not. It would mess up the hair too much. You've got a lot of hair going on there. It would, it would just, it would go everywhere. I couldn't show up to wherever I was I, You might look really cool by the time you get somewhere. That's true. Actually, if I woke up in the morning and needed my hair done, I could probably just Right, just down. step out of the shower, get it. Don't be a cat do your hair in the car. <laughs> no! Get the dirt!